Hello, welcome to my hosting plan, domain name hosting and domain name registering. I'm going to share with you how to set up your own web server connected to Dreamweaver through FTP, basically by web space, by hosting, by uh, domain names, etc., etc. Now, my domain names are going to be cheaper than you'll find most other places. As an example, here is GoDaddy. Now, GoDaddy and Register.com and Network Solutions and HostGator and those places, they basically have low prices, but then you have to buy their server. You have to buy this, you have to buy that. So in the long run, you're not basically getting deals. As an example, their .org domain names are $6.99. If you look at my hosting plan here, if I go to view pricing as an example, you'll see my prices are cheaper. Plus, plus, I offer a lot of great service for you, especially involved with Dreamweaver, any type of plan that you're doing, building websites. Now, if you scroll to the bottom here, I have a special deal right now running on .pro domain names. You can get for $4.39. So .pro, the only requirement is you have to pick an industry, web design, doctor, lawyer, etc., etc. So I'm going to scroll up here to the top. So here's how this works. Once you sign up for domain name, you then go into your control panel. So I'm going to go into my control panel right now. Now here's the important part here. And some of you have been a little confused who bought domain names in the past. Now when you buy a domain name, by default, it points to a name server. Now, as an example, if you buy something on GoDaddy.com, it points to GoDaddy name server. So this by default is going to point to my name server. So as an example, I just want to share something with you. I'm going to go and list search orders. So these are the accounts in my panel right now. Okay, so as an example, here is Linux hosting, here is reseller hosting. I'll explain the difference in just a second. So here's what you have to pay attention to. Once you sign up for domain name, I'm going to click, as an example, this domain name. Then, based on these choices right now, this domain name is pointed to my default servers. Now, if you signed up for hosting, you have to point it to your servers. So how do we do that? Okay, so I'm going to go back here for a second. So as an example, this domain name was tied to this hosting plan. So I'm going to share with you how to find AIM servers, how to FTP, how to get your IP address. Okay, so in this particular case, I've signed up for multi-domain hosting. So as an example, if I go back out here for a second, if I go back home, and let's say that I want to buy, I want to buy hosting. So I'm going to say web hosting. Okay, so these are the different web hosting plans that are available. As an example, as a as if you develop websites, this is a great deal for $8.39. Now, this is slightly, I just want to be very honest with you, this is slightly misleading because nothing's technically unlimited. Can you put a thousand domain names? No, but basically if you put up to 30, 40 domain names, you'll be fine. But I really wish it didn't say unlimited domains, but it's it's technically my hosting plan, but I go through different server accounts. So they're calling this unlimited. So you can probably put about 30, 40 debate names in here. But it's technically, if you think about this in a very practical way, unlimited means what? Millions, trillions, billions? Of course not. But this is a great deal. So if you sign up for this plan or any one of these plans, here's the next step. So I sign up for this plan as an example. So that tells me if I go into my list of orders, that's this plan right here, multi-domain hosting plan. So if I click here, by default, I want to share with you how this works. By default, this is the server. This is the name server for that particular hosting plan account. Yours can be different, but what you want to do here is once you go into your hosting plan, let's do this again, basically say multi-domain name hosting. Incidentally, when you set up an account 
ask you which domain name you want to apply to this account. So this will be your main account. Now in this video series, I'm going to show you how to set up add up domain, subdomain, cPanel, everything else. I'm going to get you rock and rolling with this in relation to Dreamweaver, setting up WordPress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I just want to share with you. So again, multi-domain hosting. I click right here, and this tells me what I need to know. So this is my name servers for that particular hosting plan. I suggest you copy and paste this and put this into a safe place. Now, if I come over here for a second, admin details, what this does for me, this tells me how to access cPanel. It tells me the cPanel address. It tells me the user account name. Now, by default, it's going to assign a password for you. Now, here's what I highly suggest you do. Either put that password in a safe place, but if you want to make a password for yourself that you're going to read, Remember, then click change password. But I want to caution you about something. There's a lot of hackers out there. So pick a a password that has uppercase, lowercase, alpha, numeric. Maybe a couple of special characters like the pound symbol or the dollar symbol. That's a good solid password. So you can change the password anything you want, but make sure it's a secure password. Don't put my password or 1234 because you're going to get hacked. Okay, so I just want to share with you. So this is the access, the cPanel, which I'll talk about in just a second. Okay, now again, this is the name servers. If I click right here, this is telling me the IP address. Okay, this is the IP address for that particular name server. This is the information we'll use inside of Dreamweaver when we set up our FTP. So this is the information that you're going to be as access your FTP information for that particular domain name. Each domain name could have separate spaces. So separate spaces for each domain name. So again, let's review this. So admin details tells you how to access the cPanel, the username plus the password to whatever you want it to be. Okay. This name server details tells you the name server that has to, your domain name has to point to. So as an example, if you transfer a domain name from an other register, like say GoDaddy.com or register.com, then you have to point that domain name here. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to go back out of here. Okay, so what I've done here is I went into the hosting plan itself hosting plan. Now if I click back there again, okay, here's the hosting plan name servers. But if I scroll up to the top, this is the main name name servers. So in this particular case, name servers are the same, but that may not be true for your particular domain. As an example, let's go back out of here for a second. So let's select this domain name. Okay, domain name, domain name registration name servers. Now if I click here, this is going to a different name server. So if I want this domain name to point to this hosting plan, so that's your hosting plan that you signed off for, so any domain name could point any place you want. So here's how it works. Domain names point to name servers. Name servers point to IP addresses. Okay. Now, that you don't have to do anything with. You just have to point the name server. So again, name server is a name server for that particular hosting plan. So if I click here again, and go to name servers. So this information, both lines would have to be copied. Now you can just copy one and change the number on the other. So as an example, I'm gonna go back here again. I'm gonna click this domain name. I'm going to click name servers and I'm going to paste. Then I can paste again and just change the one to a two. Now, I don't want to actually do this, so I'm going to cancel that. But if you wanted to do that, that's how you do it. Once you do that, you update name servers. Now, this can take up to 48 to 72 hours before it propagates in the web internet. But typically, it takes about a half hour, 45 minutes to basically change name servers. Okay, now 
want to share something else with you. I'm going to make myself a new window, and I'm going to go to who is dot net. Okay, now this will tell you where your domain name is pointing. So as an example, I own a domain name called Afoy. Dot com. So I'm going to say who is a foy.com and go. So this is going to tell me who owns this domain name. Okay. This is also going to tell me where, the, where, where it's pointing to. So in this particular case, it's pointing to these name servers. So that's how you can check to make sure that your new domain is in the correct system it's in the system it's it's about to be changed so i just want to share that technique with you okay so once you set that up once you register for a debate name you have to point to the name servers for ever hosting your site if i'm hosting your site then you need to basically select your name servers now by default again when you register a hosting plan it asks you for the name of the domain. Now, if it's a brand new domain that you just registered by default, then it's automatically going to point to this name server. But if it's a domain name that you had on a different hosting plan and you want to point it to this hosting plan, you have to change the name servers. Now, in the next video, I will show you the difference with my hosting plans. I have this hosting plan and I have the reseller hosting plan. The difference is price but this is much more flexible this is a great system for, for basically nine bucks nine bucks a month you can have probably about 40 50 different web accounts for you and your client this is a little more expensive but this creates more flexibility and i'll explain the difference in the next video